Hydatidiform mole, the other name for which is molar pregnancy, is a condition that is characterized by the proliferation of the villus trophoblasts. And this condition arises due to the abnormal fertilization of the sperms and eggs. And so depending on the type of fertilization that is going on, there could be a partial mole where there are 69 chromosomes, or there could be a complete mole where there would be 46 chromosomes. So next, I would like to discuss the difference between the partial mole as well as the complete mole. So with the partial mole, one egg is being fertilized by two sperms. So now we have 3 times 23 chromosomes. It will give rise to the 69 chromosomes. So that's why partial mole has 69 chromosomes. And so the type of combinations that we can get is one X from the egg, and then there could be an X or a Y coming from the sperms. So therefore, the combinations could be 69XXX, 69XXY, or 69XYY. And so one characteristic of the partial moles is that there would be a fetal tissue that is present with this type of molar pregnancy versus complete mole where there is no fetal tissue that is present but then it does increase the risk of choriocarcinoma and so with the complete mole there are 46 chromosomes and how it can happen is that a single sperm can fertilize an empty egg so note that there is no number written in this egg at this moment because the egg is empty and doesn't have any nucleus so all the chromosomes are coming from the father this time so a single sperm can fertilize an empty egg and then after that, it could undergo chromosome duplication to give rise to the 46 chromosomes. Alternatively, two sperms can fertilize an empty egg. And so they could give rise again to 46 chromosomes. And then in terms of the clinical findings, there is a snowstorm appearance on the ultrasound in the absence of any fetal tissues. There is an increased risk of choriocarcinoma, and due to the dilation of the villi, the complete mole has appearance of grape clusters. Now, as for the risk factors to molar pregnancy, they include prior molar pregnancy, as well as extremes of maternal age, like for instance, age of less than 15 years of age or more than 35. These are the risk factors to the development of the molar pregnancy. And then in terms of the symptoms, patients with molar pregnancy can present with missed menstrual periods, positive pregnancy tests, as well as early signs of pregnancy, like for instance, bleeding, which results from separation of the tumor from underlying tissue that can cause vaginal bleeding. Tremors, which is from the hyperthyroidism that develops in these patients. So since there is too much HCG production, during molar pregnancy, first, the pregnancy test would be positive, and second, since the HCG has a similar structure to the thyroid stimulating hormone, therefore it would be able to stimulate the thyroid hormone, and so it can cause hyperthyroidism, and so these patients can develop tremors. And then finally, patients with the uh, molar pregnancy, again, due to the high level of human chorionic gonadotropin, can present with hyperemesis gravidarum, where there is a persistent nausea and vomiting. As for the treatment, patients with molar pregnancy undergo dilation and curatage, and those with a complete mole are recommended to undergo prophylactic chemotherapy with either methotrexate or actinomycin D to prevent further development of choriocarcinoma. And then the last one I would like to mention is choriocarcinoma, the risk of which is increased with the complete molar pregnancy and choriocarcinoma is a malignant trophoblastic tissue that is made of a cytotrophoblast as well as syncytotrophoblast. But then in addition to molar pregnancy, there are other form of choriocarcinomas that can develop from germ cell tumors. And then a critical difference between these two forms of choriocarcinoma is that the one that has arised from molar pregnancy has a good response to chemotherapy, while the one that has arise from germ cell tumors has a poor response 
to the chemotherapy. And the way I memorize it is that, you know how during pregnancy, the fetus is sensitive to everything. It's sensitive to radiation, it's sensitive to chemotherapy, so we have to be really careful. So therefore, since this type of choriocarcinoma is arising from molar pregnancy, therefore, this type of tumor is also highly sensitive to chemotherapy, and thus there would be a good response. So once again, the type of choriocarcinoma that arises from molar pregnancy has a good response to chemotherapy versus the one that is arising from germ cell tumors which have a poor response to chemotherapy. And that concludes our discussion of the molar pregnancy.